Hi, I'm Roz and I'm here to talk to you about my latest blog post, which is about using this time of lockdown and possibly solitude as a time to get to know and love yourself. I actually just got off a call with John McCarthy, who, if you're British, uh, you may well have heard of. Back in the late 80s and into the early 90s, John McCarthy was held hostage in Beirut for five years, uh, some of which uh, he spent in solitary confinement, the rest of the time in a six foot by six foot cell with an Irishman called Brian Keenan. And uh, we were doing a conversation together for the BBC World Service talking about solitude. And he um, was kind enough to take some time after the interview to have a chat offline with me. And I asked him if he had found any gifts in the time that he spent as a hostage. And he said one of the things that really meant a lot to him was after their ordeal, uh, he and Brian Keenan and a couple of Americans who were also with them for part of the time, they all wrote books about their ordeal. And they all said nice things about John and what a great guy he was. And so if he hadn't really seen himself as a great guy, it really meant a lot to him that these men that he had been with 24 seven for years on end in a tiny cell in a very scary situation, saw him as being a good person. And I think this is something that solitude can really do for us. There's this thing called socialization, which as we're growing up, we learn to adopt the behaviors that other people seem to like. It's part of what normal people do, although we probably all know a few people who never quite got the hang of socialization. But most of us learn how to get along with people. And the danger is that we learn to confuse that public persona with the actual person that we are on the inside. So I think during our teens and 20s, it's, it's very normal to identify with that persona and even to try on different personas to see which one seems to be the most popular or the most acceptable. But then maybe there's a, an unlearning that goes on after that when we try and reconnect with the person that we truly are on the inside. And solitude definitely makes that easier when we're not interacting with other people, but actually just being with ourselves. It's a great opportunity to find out how we, who we really are. So why would we bother to do that? Because it's hard work. It's that peeling of the onion. But I think there are very good reasons why it's a worthwhile exercise. The first one is self-respect. How can you respect yourself if you don't really know who you are? And self-respect, I would say, is a good thing. And then secondly, uh, if you're trying to find a purpose in your life, if it's going to be a sustainable purpose that you're going to be able to consistently find the energy and the commitment to, um, then you need to know who you are and what matters to you in order to find a purpose that really resonates with your true nature. And thirdly, we can probably all think of somebody in our acquaintance who is just completely and unashamedly themselves. And if they're doing it right, then there is probably a charisma and a magnetism, an aura about them, because they just are who they are and they celebrate that and they're comfortable with themselves and they're comfortable with the way that they show up in the world. When we're not trying or pretending to be somebody else, it frees up so much more energy that we can put into really connecting with other people. So I think it's really worth getting to know yourself if that's not where you are at the moment. And there may be some aspects of yourself that you discover that you love. And there may be some other aspects that you don't love quite so much. And that's fine. Nobody's perfect. And actually, if we were, we just really annoy people. So if you are perfect, just tone it down a bit, please. So I hope that you'll take this time when you're maybe not socialising quite as much to get to know yourself better and hopefully to also love yourself. 
So um, I just, as I was writing my notes for this, I was thinking about that film, Mrs. Doubtfire, where Robin Williams is playing the role of the nanny so that he can spend time with his own kids. And in one particular scene, he's having to run between different rooms and doing costume changes on the way, pretending to be more than one person. And it's exhausting. And inevitably, at one point, he screws up. He shows up in the wrong room with the wrong clothes on. And when we're trying to be somebody that we're not, it can often feel like that. It could feel like we're running around like mad, trying always to present our most acceptable face to each person while never actually being true to ourselves. And it is exhausting. It's a big energetic overhead. And when we can just let all of that go and just trust that if we love ourselves, then other people will love us too for who we really are. It just takes so much pressure off. So um, I wish you all the gifts of solitude. I hope you get to know and love yourself and learn to really enjoy just being you. Because one thing you can know for sure, nobody else can be you as well as you can. Lots of love to you. Take care.